हेलो एवरीवन नमस्ते सर नमस्ते सर आई एम अमृता नाती ही इज डॉक्टर बी रत्नराज गारू आर बेलवट प्रिंसिपल एंड ही इज डॉक्टर वेंकट बिरला गारू आर डायरेक्टर एकेडमिक्स वेलकम वेलकम टू आर स्टूडियो सर सिंस आई हैव विजिटेड दिस कॉलेज आई एम वेरी एंथुसियास्टिक टू नो मेनी मेनी थिंग्स अबाउट दिस कॉलेज सर सो बिफोर गोइंग टू द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग आई वुड लाइक टू आस्क सम क्वेश्चन सर सो could you tell us a little more about the historical background of this college and something about the current management r r h e t very good question because this college was started in to, in the year 2008 but later on uh, because of this bifurcation of the andhra pradesh state and later again after 3 4 years we got this pandemic and in the past 2 years we are facing uh, a lot of uh, financial crisis because of this pandemic and all but we are so fortunate because of this new management take over of this institution they have rushed into all the developments from the past two day two years only the activities are conducted only through online but immediately we started offline activities not only the regular academic activities we started co curricular activities also like conferences and uh, extra curricular activities by inviting eminent personalities into the campus and by conducting this national and international famous days like uh, environmental day or the health day or this uh, uh, what we call this uh, yoga day and all these things so at the stretch we could start all these things because of this new management so what is what the is historical, historical background now? and how in a short span of time you have been able to make a total change from what this college was and what it is today the main reason is our newly recruited staff members and our team the management has given huge advertisement across the country seeking the people who are very much aware about the vision of the new management and fortunately we could recruit the people who are close to the vision of the new management and they started working according to the vision of this new management in that way we could succeed in all these activities all right sir mm. having a strong alumni network is essential for the college future what is your take on this sir yes amrita a good question Uh, alumni are the backbone of an institution because great institutions like iits or iims or nits you will be surprised to know that uh, they were built by the contributions made by alumni labs the ciit bombay labs for example are all built by alumni the second one is uh, employment if you have a strong alumni network your previous students are working in infosys wipro accenture ECS kind of companies, they may be heading uh, HR, they may be heading marketing, whatever, and you would like to send the students. So when that HR, who is an alumni of yours, comes to your campus and recruits, he is recruiting from his own college. So therefore, she is recruiting from her own <coughs> college. So therefore, it will be a synergy, and then uh, employment, which is the ultimate solution of the ultimate aim of the education, at least in these areas. So that would be a fantastic. So I would recommend a strong alumni. network for uh, institutions like this and that's what we are trying to do here exactly very correct sir uh, what are the accreditations this college has and what is the future course of this action we have very good accreditation we, first of all we can say that we are having this iso certification and we have accredited by the national assessment and accreditation council nac provisional selection provisional accredited by that and our accreditation in future is the national board of accreditation so we have to get the nba accreditation of all the programs many colleges are accredited by nba but limited number of programs even though the college is having half a dozen programs probably one or two may be accredited but we are targeting to get the accreditation for all the programs which are offered by the institution that is our goal 
A high-tech campus, a green campus, a state-of-the-art campus will attract high-quality students. How are you planning this, sir? Actually, because of this academic calendar disturbance, because of the pandemic and all, some people have selected other colleges located in the other states. Some people have selected different uh, programs other than the B.Tech and all. But now it is slowly getting stabilized. But in this perception, by training, by offering the vigorous training to the existing students, we can get good placements. Based on that, we can attract good quality of students. Once the campus is filled with good quality of students, then everything will become a cakewalk for us, even for the students also. They can get very good placements. Yes, so, now, what are the challenges you are facing in maintaining a good hostel for boys and girls? Sir? Well, we have excellent hostels for boys and girls separately and uh, there are no challenges as such. We are trying to improve the facilities as we go along and definitely in the years to come, we will have uh, much more facilities which are uh, exclusive rooms, paid rooms, uh, uh, then air conditioned rooms to have. So depending on the uh, uh, requirement of the students, we will be able to make exclusive rooms facilities and we made a good beginning. I understand you conduct daily study hours for the inmates. What are the challenges and the advantages, sir? Yeah, that's a very important question because uh, a student, for example, when he or she goes to the college during the daytime, the absorption of the subject is only to an extent. Amongst the 60 students in a class, when you are studying, the first Row students receive in a particular way and the last row students receive to an extent and so on, so that we are aware of it. But then when you go in the evening, have an hour or two study hours, there is an exclusive focus. For example, I conduct uh, my study hours to the students and I go. I touch base with every student. What is the question you are studying? What is the answer for this? So when there is an exclusive personalized attention, which is not possible in the daytime. We do this in the evening time, which is we call it a study hour. And it's giving a very, very good results. When our students came in the mid one, they got 20% marks, all the Telugu medium students. In the mid two, two months later, they got 40% marks. Today, mid three, 80% marks. This is the kind of a graph we are able to build with the, of course, faculty have done a wonderful job and uh, definitely study hour is paying. We'd like to strengthen it. We'd like to see that uh, each student is given much more the subject wise exclusive studies and more, make it more intensive. intensive. And uh, I'm glad to say that many of the famous institutions do have this practice, which uh, they are following, seeing our example. And we are very proud of that. Thank you very much. Very glad to hear, sir. Many are improving, many are learning, and many are growing, sir. Industrial visits every year you are planning. Why not in the only final year itself, sir? Well, traditionally it was the practice. Uh, universities prescribed, uh, you know, in the third year you do an, a project and uh, you visit an industry and so on. But we believe that uh, uh, the, the three months orientation or four weeks orientation uh, would not help the student and we have started a practice much against the traditional practice of the universities. We have started a practice of uh, sending the students to the industries every semester. So when a, when a student joins B.Tech or uh, B Pharmacy in the first year, when he or she looks at an industry to start with, later on when I teach boilers and when I teach chemical analysis, they will understand better because they have seen it when they went in the first semester itself. Without that, when I'm teaching in the class, he's only hearing theory. Therefore, I would like to see that they will see and learn, listen and learn, practice and learn. This is our three-point formula and we are very successful. Nice, sir. And very glad to know that from the beginning, from the first semester, we are going to industrial tours, we are getting to know how the industries are and how it functions and growing up it, experience makes, um, you know, very knowledgeable.
and now how do you think outcome based education and interdisciplinary will help sir now globally the outcome based education system is being followed by all the technical institutions it doesn't mean that whether the student has been certified with bachelor of technology in so and so branch or so and so program or like that the thing is what is the objective of this particular program and how much the graduate has been achieved in engineering because the expectation from an engineering graduate will be different in an industry yes. the expectation from an engineering graduate in the research or further education is different so based on this globally some definitions are there program educational objectives the objectives how much they met the candidate Has met this this much of the objectives, say 50 percent or 70 percent or 80 percent. The measure should be there. It is not simply teaching or later cracking or later cracking the exam or later evaluation of the examination scripts or not. Yes. Total skills, academically, curricular, co-curricular, extracurricular. Now all this became only the curricular activity. So we take the performance of this particular student in all these activities. and we can say that our graduate has been achieved this much yes. apart from the regular certification yes. we can show that yeah this particular batch has achieved this many objectives so that's what we are importing in our teaching learning methodology yes. that benefits a lot for the outgoing graduates with practical knowledge yeah yes sir right sir <clears throat>